صلى على النبي One day there was a young man traveling from Basra to Baghdad, the capital of Iraq. And then as he was getting closer to Baghdad, normally Baghdad is surrounded by gardens of fruits. So he went under the shade of one of those gardens and he said, let me rest for a while. So he slept for a while and then all of a sudden an apple fell on top of his in top of him while he's sleeping so he woke up and he got the apple he said alhamdulillah oh, i got an apple uh, let me eat i'm so hungry so he started eating the apple until he finished almost half of it when he finished half of the apple then he said astaghfirullah how can i eat the apple it doesn't belong to me it belongs to the owner of the garden how can i eat haram astaghfirullah the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam said you mustn't eat haram So he said, let me go to the man, the owner of the garden, and ask him permission, and ask him to forgive me. So he went inside, he found the owner of the garden, and said, uncle, I'm so sorry, my name is Thabit, I'm traveling from Basra to Baghdad, and I sat for a rest here, and then the apple fell on top of me, so I was so hungry and I ate it. Please forgive me. So the man, the owner of the garden, he said to himself, this man is so pious, man. He's so pious, man. Let me test him. So he said to him, Only one apple that you're coming to seek the permission for it? Or you took so many? He said, no, Allah, only one apple. I, I, I promise you, Allah, only one apple. And I, please forgive me. And he started to cry. He said, the man said to him, when he saw him crying, he said, I will not forgive you ever. I'm not going to forgive you. I'm going to take it from you on the day of judgment. He said, uncle, why are you doing this? Rasul sallallahu said, you must forgive and pardon. When we ask you forgiveness, you must forgive and pardon. So he said, no, I'm not going to forgive you. He said, so, so what must I do now? I must I pay you for it? He said, no, I don't want any money from you. He said, so what do you want? He said, when the, when the owner of the garden saw that he is so pious and so, uh, and so honest, he said, let me, marry, let me let him marry my, my, my daughter. So he said to him, the only way to forgive you is to marry my daughter. He said, what? To marry your daughter? He said, yes, to marry my daughter and work for me here. He said, no problem. <laughs> I was actually going looking for, for, for a job in Baghdad so I can, I can marry. He said, but this is something that you don't be in a hurry to accept. There's something that I must tell you about, about her. He said, what is it? He said, this, my girl, is blind. She can't see. He said, what? Inna lillahi inna rajaun. Blind? That means that I'm going to take care of her. She has certain disabilities. I have to take care of her. So he started to think for a while and, and got a bit sad. And then he said, all right, I, I accept. For, for you to forgive me, I accept. He said, no, 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 wait. Before you say I accept, there's something else that I want to tell you about. He said, what? He said, my daughter is mute. She doesn't speak. She doesn't know how to speak. She, she is mute. She, can't, she doesn't have the ability to speak. So he said, inna lillah. That means I'm going to be talking to myself the whole, the whole day and night. She doesn't speak. He said, he said yes. So he said, okay, I accept, but let me know, is there anything else that she's suffering from? Any other disabilities? He said, yes, she is paralyzed. She doesn't walk. So he started to rethink again. And then he said, at the end he said, okay, for the sake of you, forgive me. I accept. I'm going to marry her. So he said, all right, let's go make the, let's go uh, ask the girl. So he went to ask the girl. He informed the girl. And then he went to do the marriage. And they, they did the marriage contract and they went to the imam and they did the marriage and he married her. And then now the boy came, the young man came to, to see his wife. So when he entered the room to see his wife, then he saw a very beautiful wife, a very beautiful girl. And then he, he said, subhanallah, you're so beautiful. Uh, I'm your husband. Oh, I forgot. You can't, you, can't, you can't talk. You can't hear and you can't even see. He said, who told you that? He started to speak. He said, ah, you can speak. Allah Akbar, you can speak. He said, yes, I can speak. She said, so, did my father say that you can speak? They can't speak? Then she said, he said, yes. She, he told me that. He said, he told me that you can't speak, you can't walk, and you can't even, and you can't even see. He said, no, I can see you, and I can walk. She started walking, and she started talking. She so was surprised. He said, then why he told me that? He said, ah, I figured it out. My father was testing you. He meant that I can't speak because I never speak haram. I never speak any bad words. I never insult. I never use any bad words. And I'm blind. I don't look at haram. I never looked at haram. And I can't hear. I can't hear any haram. 
And I'm paralyzed means that I don't walk to haram. So he was so happy that his wife was, alhamdulillah, she had all the abilities and she was very pious and he married and he found a job just because he he did not continue to eat the haram in the way of the haram. And when someone stay away from haram, Allah will give him better than that in a halal way. Like the story? Alhamdulillah. May Allah bless you all. If you like the story, don't forget to share with others, to subscribe, and to let us know in the comments, inshallah.